Welcome to this video. One of you asked me on my website explainingmaths.com to help me with this question. So all credit goes to Cambridge because this is not my question. We're just here together to help uh, each other to understand maths. And please visit my website explainingmaths.com for all my free resources and you can also ask me your questions there. Good. Whenever I get a question like this on an exam, uh, first thing that pops in my mind is it's going to be about transformations, most likely. Um, I see some, some shapes, some images, I see um, some matrices. So clearly a question about transformations. Let's have a quick look. It's 2, 4, 7, 9, 12 points. So it's quite an important question. And I'm sure that if you approach it all with, um, you know, with care and accuracy, you'll be able to get most of those points in. Let's start. It says draw the reflection of shape P in the line Y equals X. And it's always important to realize transformations, they either um, change the size or the position of a particular object. Okay, And we have different types of transformations. We need to have reflections, but we also have translations and rotations. And finally, we have enlargements. But now they're talking about a reflection and the line of reflection is y equals x so i'm going to draw the line y equals x and you i'm sure you can do a better job than i can because i'm going to place this ruler on top of my screen of my tablets um and it's one of those barbie rulers or princess rulers oh, okay that's that's quite accurate okay so that's the line y equals x uh, through the origin with a gradient of one you make sure you use a proper ruler and a sharp pencil because this line is actually too thick Yeah, but I can't make it any thinner, but it should be a very thin line. Okay, it's a diagonal line So it's not a vertical or horizontal line of reflection, but diagonal doesn't matter at all um, The shape P so this is shape P and we are going to reflect it now. What happens with a diagonal line of reflection? I'm going to take it vertex, vertex by vertex. I'm going to start here. I always go horizontally first so I go two steps horizontally to the line of reflection. Because it's diagonal, I go two steps down to find the image vertex. So I'm going to put that point there. I could also have chosen to go two steps down first, and then I have to go two stop steps horizontally. Yeah. Or if you want to do it perpendicular, that's fine. You go straight ahead. Yeah. But just as long as you do it um, always in the same manner. Yeah. So I always do two steps horizontally and then two steps down. So this one, one, two, three, four. So it's going to be one, two, three. It's going to be over there. So I'm just going to put that vertex there. And that's how I'm going to do all four of them. This one, well, let's go down first now. One, two, three. So then horizontally, one, two, three. And it's important to realize that the size of this object is not going to change. It's only going to change the position of the object. Yeah. Last one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six over there. So I should still get this trapezium, and I do. And mine doesn't look very nice. Oh, because I don't have a sharp pencil. But you should just do this with a sharp pencil, and it should be accurate, and it should be a trapezium you are proud of. Okay, there we go. And finally there okay so that is the image so i'm just going to label that with p apostrophe all right there we go it's the first two points then it says draw the translation of shape p by the vector minus two one uh, again for two points and now we indeed we have had a reflection another transformation is a translation indeed and then they gave me this column vector which means minus two that or the top number if you like is always the horizontal translation and the bottom number is the vertical translation. And minus two means then two steps to the left. Yeah, minus two. So I'll do that one in red, minus two, and then one up. So that point is going to be there. This point will be over there. And I'll do that again for all vertices. A one, two, one, a one, two, one, a one, two, one. So the entire shape P, the entire trapezium is being moved two steps to the left and one step up. That is what that column vector means. And I have already earned four points. What two for the reflection and two now for my translation. Fantastic. P double apostrophe to distinguish between the two of them. Good. Those were two types of transformations. We're going to continue. Describe fully the single transformation that maps P onto shape W. Okay, so a single transformation. 
Um, again, um, can it be, uh, you should know the types of transformations. Uh, can it be a translation, the one we've just done? No, because that will just move P in a particular direction, but it's not going to rotate it. So it's not going to be a translation. Could it be a reflection? Well, sometimes it can. However, I don't see any diagonal line that's going to reflect P onto W. It's certainly not an enlargement. I hope you understand that. So what is left is a rotation. So I'm already going to write down rotation because that's one point but with rotation you got to give some extra information first of all you got to give the amount of degrees secondly you got to give the direction and thirdly you got to give the center of rotation and usually the center of rotation is the origin yeah they're not, never going to give a too obscure center of rotation it's usually the origin and uh, how can you check that get a piece of tracing paper put it on top Stick your, uh, quickly trace shape P on your tracing paper, stick your pen in what you think the center is, move your tracing paper, and then you'll notice that P indeed exactly maps onto W. Yeah, I will embed the video on this side of the screen where I explain that in more detail, yeah, with the tracing paper, but that's how you check it. And then you will notice that indeed the center is, center is the origin, zero, zero. Um, it is going to be a 90 degrees rotation and in which direction that is a clockwise direction clockwise okay so don't forget to give all those pieces of information don't just say rotation you should also give the center the amount of degrees and the direction all right so it was quite easy to find out that it is a rotation simply by crossing out the other possibilities because it's not a translation it's not a reflection it's not an enlargement so what is left is the um, the rotation. Fantastic. Three points. Excellent. Find a two by two matrix which represents this transformation. Okay, so what represent this type of rotation can also be captured in uh, a matrix. And this is how you approach it. We're going to look at two points. I'll do that in blue. Whenever I have to find a matrix, I'm going to look at two points. I'm going to look at this point first. And as a column vector, that is point one zero okay x is one y is zero that's that point and after this transformation a rotation center zero zero 90 degree clockwise where will this point be this point is going to be after the rotation is going to be over there do you agree with that so after the rotation 90 degree clockwise it is going to be over there so one zero is going to become after the rotation x will be zero y is going to be minus one and that's going to be my four first column in my matrix, 0, minus 1. I'm going to look at another point after 1, 0, eh, which is that point. I'm going to look at this point, and that point is 0, 1. X is 0, Y is 1. X is 0, Y is 1. Okay, and we're going to look what happens with that point after that transformation. So that will become, uh, let me see, so 90 degree clockwise it's going to be over there you, see, you agree with that nine degree clockwise rotation it's going to be over there so zero one will turn into one zero yeah in a new situation after the rotation it's going to be at one zero and that is going to be the column here then one zero there you go two points and again i'll put a video here in this corner where i explain that in more detail how to find those matrices all right, final question, D for three points. Describe fully, again, the single transformation represented by this particular matrix. I'm not going to do it uh, simply because I took it out of the syllabus um, because it is a stretch, and we don't have to do stretches anymore, all right? Uh, but uh, just to give you the answer, uh, looking at this matrix, it's a stretch with the skill factor is 2, and the invariant line is the uh, x-ax, all right? But I'm not going to do that anymore because they took stretches out of the curriculum, so you only have to do reflections, translations, rotations, and enlargements. That's the only one that is missing from this particular type of question. Okay, good. Almost 10 minutes. That's a long time. Hopefully, you've managed to sit it all out. Um, thank you very much. Please like and share, guys, if this was useful. And check my site, explainingmaths.com. It's really going to help you, I'm sure. Have a good day. Bye-bye.